Bob's project is in the nature of an experiment. And like Sandy, he has the city as a laboratory in which to carry it out. It is hard to say what makes going to college in a big city so stimulating an experience. What gives the students the feeling of being in touch with the world rather than just learning about it from a distance? For one thing, since their campus has almost no physical limits, they live for four years in an endless series of changing environments, each complete, each different. But more than that, there is the day-to-day -day proximity to the people of the city. The people who are all peoples. The people who are intelligent and dull, rich and poor, selfish and kindly, serious and gay. It is because of the variety of its people that the city helps us to develop new tastes, tempts us to try new experiences, enables us to enjoy ourselves in new ways. The city, often called an education in itself, is even a more satisfactory educational experience when it is tied to the disciplines of formal learning when it is the workshop where we see the ideas and theories applied to life. Economics is not dry when it has to do with real things that people want to buy or sell. Sociology is meaningful when populations become people. Culture comes alive when it is expressed in the dramatic terms of the theater. This is fun, but it is also language, communications, philosophy, anthropology. When we laugh or cry or are intrigued, we are also learning. The city can be a great arena where we comprehend the social forces that are analyzed in the lecture hall. Bob was at the familiar meeting place a few days later, but in a different mood. Hi. Hello, what are you doing here? Waiting for you. What's the matter? Why so glum? I got turned down. They think the idea smells. About the Unified ad? Yeah. I went to two magazines. They didn't laugh at me or anything, but they gave me plenty of reasons why the idea was no good. Oh, that's a shame, Bob. Uh, I really thought I had something. Worst of it is, I have a date with Sperry this afternoon to tell him all about my glorious triumph. Say, will you come along and back me up? Sure I will. Not that you need it. Oh, don't I? So they turned it down, eh, Bob? Oh, they were nice enough about it, though. They certainly should have been. It's a nice layout. They said so, too. Yeah. But they told me I was kind of neglecting to see that advertisers are anxious to make people like their product, not the magazine. Well, you can't blame them for that, can you? No. But I don't see why they can't think of both. They do, Bob. The magazine has to sell, or the advertising won't reach enough people. They both, the magazine and the advertisers, have a common purpose. I mean, to try to get to as many people as possible. That's right. Then why not go all the way and use Bob's idea? Because that would rob the advertisers of their individuality. The uniformity alone is dull and monotonous. I think I'm beginning to get it, Bob. Remember that lecture we had in bio last year? The one when we talked about bees and tigers and penguins? The idea was that the penguins kept their individuality, but worked together for the common good. Well, I had a half-baked idea and it flopped. Not at all, Bob, not at all. A failure like yours is pretty close to a triumph. There's nothing wrong with failure. Through failure, you learn what's first rate. After all, that's one of the reasons we go to college. Of course, so you can make mistakes where someone will help you correct them. But more than that, so that you can learn what's best and learn the best ways of achieving it. That's what the university is for. It's a giant memory. It enables us to build on the successes of our ancestors, and sometimes, Bob, on their failures. That is how all men have learned the hard lessons throughout the course of history. The Hall of Fame at New York University is full of men to whom success came after repeated failure. Men like Walt Whitman, who spent a lifetime revising his first book of poems, or Abraham Lincoln, who won the presidency by losing a campaign for the Senate. There are men, too, like General Gorgas, a distinguished graduate of the university, and men like Samuel F. B. Morse, a brilliant member of the university's faculty. Their place of honor above the city is a fitting one. 
For the centers of all great civilizations have been great cities. And through its university, the strength and the vitality of a city are constantly renewed. Only through the development of the minds and talents of many, many individuals can the American dream come true, generation after generation. Yeah.